Hey everyone, welcome to How To Be Fancy. I'm Heather and today I'm going to be continuing our series on the basics. Um, I have washed my hair last night and so this morning I am going to curl it for you. I feel like I have a lot of makeup on for the morning but tonight I'm going to see Gloria Estefan the musical. Um, is it Get On Your Feet? Is that the name of it? I don't know. Actually, I actually have no expectations for it so I love going to things like this when I have no idea what's going to happen. Um, but I am excited. Um, so my hair I washed last night and I kind of partially blow dried it and then I was too tired and so I slept with it a little bit damp, which is not preferred, but it's what I did. If you've seen my hair prep video, I did everything in that video with the exception of putting the heat spray on. So I'm going to do that really quickly right now. Um, this is the Kenra hot spray and a lot of you told me that you have a really hard time spraying this too. So I'm not alone in that I can't do this with one hand problem. And some of you recommended decanting this into something else and I'm going to do that. I just haven't found my empty spray bottle yet. Then I'm going to go back in with my Denman brush. And if you're curious about all of the tools that I'm using, I did a whole video just about tools. So you can go back and watch that as well. I'm going to just brush this through the hair to make sure everything's kind of evenly coated. And then before I start heat styling my hair today, um, I want to make sure that all of that heat protectant is dry so you don't get that crazy sizzle. So for this video, I'm going to be heat styling my hair using the Hot Tools Professional. Again, I talked about this in the tools video. Um, this one is the three quarter inch and it's fairly new to me. I think I've used it maybe in one other video. I'm not even sure that I posted that video now that I think of it. Maybe I did. I don't remember. Uh, maybe it was in my Maisel video that I used this um, tool. Now you can choose to part your hair wherever you like. Again, I like to do it kind of right over my eyebrow. Um, it just gives me a little bit more of the vintage look I'm going for, but sometimes I do part it in the middle if I'm looking for that like Hedy Lamar sort of look. Maybe I'll show you that style in another curling video so you can see how I curl for that. Since this is the basics though, this is how I would normally part my hair. And basically what I like to do is just kind of section off my hair into a few sections. So I'll take this front section as like one little area to roll. And then I'll take this other like bang kind of section with my shorter pieces and make those into a section that I'll be curling. And you can pin these off if you want. I generally don't do that because I'm lazy. And then the back section, what I normally do is part it down the middle and kind of make two sections out of each part of the back. I hope that makes sense. You'll see what I mean as we go along. So start wherever you like, but depending on how thick your hair is, how textured your hair is, um, if your hair is straight or wavy, will kind of depend on how big of a section you take. My hair is very um, straight and fine, but I have a lot of hairs on my head. And it's also got some good texture to it because I do bleach my hair when I color it. And so I've got like a nice texture to my hair. Otherwise, I would probably need to do a lot more um, prep work when it comes to products. I'm going to take this little section here and make it just a little bit deeper. Something like that. And then I'm going to split that into two. Open my clips so that I'm ready to go once I've got the curl in place. And then I like to lift this hair up just a little bit so that as I'm curling, I'm um, almost over correcting the curl so I get a little bit more volume. Um, so this is called curling off base. And I start the curl kind of right a couple of inches from the crown of my head, put that in the clip and then roll it around. And I want to keep this little section here as flat as possible. So it's almost like a running a ribbon through. So rather than like twisting my hair through the curling iron, I wanna run it through really flat. I'm sorry if I'm staring at my little screen over here. I don't have a camera right, or a mirror right in front of me. Um, I should probably go get one, but I just didn't do it for this. I don't want you to miss the first curl. Oh, hiya. <laughs> I feel like I almost had a moment like that girl, the YouTube girl. Holy moly, I need a mirror, hold on. I'm gonna kind of sit this in maybe a couple of inches down from the roots of my hair, clip that into place, and then just start rolling the ends toward my scalp. 
And the reason I do this is to keep a lot of the heat off of my crown so that it's nice and flat. Um, but I also like to get the volume through the middle of the hair because I need it. You want to make sure to catch all of those little ends. That's the most important part of styling uh, vintage hair to me is making sure you grab those little ends so there's not any little twisty pieces or little like sections that are straight and curly. You want everything nice and uniform. So then I try and catch that little curl just because it saves a little bit of time and then roll that up to the scalp. I'm sure you've seen me do this like a million times, so sorry, but this is the basics. So we're covering all of the basics. Then I take one of these little duck bill clips um, and just pop it right on the bottom of the curl to hold that into place. Taking the section right next to that, I'm gonna do the same thing. The other great thing about curling like this with a clip is that if you have a lot of layers, that clip will help catch and guide your hair through the barrel of the curling iron to make sure every little layer, little like, little bit gets curled. Pull it off. Roll it up to the base. Grab a clip. And clip it in. Now I tend to work out from my part and so going back and forth from each side. And that's really for no other reason than um, I have a lot of like neck and shoulder pain. And so by alternating what section I'm working on at a time, I kind of rotate the tension on my neck. And so that's just a little tip if you have any kind of um, pain in those areas. This can get really tiresome. Um, and I know a lot of people who suffer with chronic illnesses have a hard time styling their hair. So any little trick that you can find that helps you, um, saves you some energy, I think I am all for that. And just go slow. If you feel like you need to take a break, take a break. Um, I like to do this when I have plenty of time. Um, I don't like to do it in a rush because I end up with a bad curl and I end up in a bad mood. So if at all possible, do this. And when you have some time, do it the night before um, you want to wear your hair like this or on a weekend if you can. I like to make my la sets last for as many days as possible. So if I were to do this, say, on a Monday, then I'm usually good until Friday with a hair set. So in that sense, it's really um, handy if you deal with pain on a regular basis and because you can kind of just do this once and then you're not having to fuss too much with it. There's still some upkeep and maintenance, which I'll show you in another video, um, but it is a little bit easier than having to um, do this every single day. And I don't do things to perfection all the time. You can see I'm like tilting this curling iron this way when um, honestly it'd be better if I would do it straight on. But again, because I'm managing my pain and managing what my body can do, I don't always do it perfectly and it'll be just fine. Now if you see a little piece like that that you think is not quite curled enough at the end, you can either just re-roll the end of the curl, um, skipping out all of the top part because you've kind of already got that rolled up. So you can either just run back through and grab this and roll it in. Or sometimes what I like to do if the curl is still hot enough is I'll just kind of tuck it in to the curl and roll it down and the heat from the surrounding hair will kind of help hold that into place and mold it the way we want to. And the point of sticking these into standing pin curls and clipping them is you want everything to curl in this shape. So once it has cooled completely in this shape, you're gonna get a much better, fuller, longer lasting curl. So I'm gonna continue and do these sections and I'll be right back. One thing I did want to mention, as you can see with this curling iron, um, you've got a clip here and then a round barrel here, like so. And a lot of people I have seen curling their hair will flip this upside down, put the hair in like this, and then curl over the barrel like this. And if you do that, you are going to create a little ridge with your hair coming through the clip getting clamped in and then bending around the wrong way. So you wanna make sure when you put the hair in that the clamp is at the top 
like this so that when you put the hair in, it feeds it around the barrel. Um, I hope that makes sense. I've seen a couple people um, have some poor results because you're not putting the hair into the curling iron the correct way. So I hope that clears that up. If that's a problem that you've been having getting those little ridges, um, that might be what you're doing. I don't know, um, but it's worth looking at how you're feeding the hair into the curling iron. I usually get about three or four curls on this side and this little section, usually about six or seven, sometimes eight on this side. And I always think that it's best um, if you are not sure how much hair to put into the curling iron to do a little bit less than what you think um, because it just more evenly distributes the curl and the heat that you're putting in the curl it allows it to get through that hair just a little bit more especially when we're going for kind of this fluffy vintage style now moving on to the back what I'm gonna do is section the hair in half and then I'm gonna take my fancy little scrunchie here and tie my hair off with that on one side so that I can focus solely on the um, remaining hair that is loose. Um, once I have that all tied off, I'm going to section that little section um, kind of into a diagonal. And then starting at the top, I will work on that one diagonal section all the way down. It's kind of like sectioning your hair into a pie. Um, when it comes to the back section. So I usually get about four sections out of this and then um, I'll kind of show you as I go along how it looks. Now because you're doing this on the back of your own head, obviously it's not gonna be perfect. So as I'm going through, what I will do is look directly into a mirror when I section these bits off and then I will take the section that I want to curl and kind of pull it a little bit more around to the front so that I can see it a little bit better. And I do like to run my brush through this just to kind of get out the tangles because if you curl a tangle, it is going to be a really funny looking curl. So I pull it around kind of to the side, to the front a little bit more to get it initially into the curling iron and work it all the way down the curling iron. So I'll get it all the way down. Sorry, there's a really loud truck outside. So I try my best to get that end in there in a place where I can see it so that I know it's not sticking out. And then once I know it's in there, then I'll take the curling iron and move it kind of more back into the position where it should be on the back of my head. And then if it kind of sprawls out like this curl did, all you have to do is just kind of run your hands through it and grab the little end section into like a little loop here and just curl it back up. And because the hair is still warm, you'll be just fine. Need a little bit more hair in that section, so I just kind of grabbed from this other side so that I have enough hair here at the top. A little bit of a cowlick right there, and so my hair tends to go in a wobbly direction. Same thing on top though, when you're working in the back. I just kind of make sure, pull the hair straight up, um, so that I can hold on to this tail and really feed everything into the curling iron and get it all nice and wrapped around. Like that. And then once it's on there, then I can roll it down and place it where it needs to actually go. And I find that by pumping the like little clip like this, it loosens it up, but it also kind of helps distribute the heat throughout the curl. Um, so when you're ready to take that off, when you pump it like that, rather than just trying to like pull the wand out, you kind of get some airflow through the curl. And so it kind of heats all the way through and you're also loosening it up as you go. So I'm gonna finish curling this and I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, so this is everything curled. Now I'm gonna show you the back because I want you to see that if I were doing this on someone else, it would be very neat and professional. But when you're doing this on yourself, particularly if you have any kind of neck problems, it's not gonna be super neat. There's um, very few people I find that when you're heat setting can really make this look like nice and perfect and pretty. But the goal here isn't necessarily to make this look pretty. Um, it's just to get everything completely rolled under and clipped so that it can cool on your head. So I'm gonna show you. Do you see what I mean? See how this is kind of flat and messy and I've got hairs pulled from all different directions. Um, that's just what's gonna happen. So I don't want you to think that this has to be perfection. The most important thing here is getting those ends into your curling iron, making sure that you're using the 
curling iron properly and getting everything clipped up and cooled completely. So to let this cool completely, I usually give it at least 30 minutes if I can. Um, the minimum I would do is 20 minutes on my hair. Um, and again, that will vary depending on the texture um, and length of your hair. I like to use a heat setting like this when I don't have a full night to sleep on my hair, but you could sleep on this if you wanted to. If you decide to sleep on this, I would recommend wrapping a silk scarf around your head and pinning it to your scalp and so that it doesn't fall off during the night. You will flatten these standing pin curls a little bit, um, but I find that you don't lose too much in the curl department if you do it right. Um, it's not my preferred um, method. Sleeping on this is not my preferred method. I'll show you that in a future video, um, but you can do that if you wish to. Um, so I'm gonna give this a few minutes to cool off completely and then I will take it out and style it. I'm not actually gonna show you the brush out in this particular video because I know this is gonna be really long um, and that might get a little bit boring. Um, I just wanted you to know exactly how I curl my hair with a curling iron. But if you have any questions, feel free to leave those down below. Um, I do have a post over on Instagram. It's um, the one, it's got this color background in it and I think I'm holding a comb in front of my eye and I asked you to leave me any of your hair questions. So if you we're watching this and you had any questions that were pressing um, about how to curl your hair with a curling iron go to that post on Instagram it's at how to be fancy and leave the question there because I am going to be doing a Q&A from the questions that I don't get to answer in the videos at the very end of this series and I'll also be sharing kind of a sped up version of the brush out on this style over on Instagram so you and I head over there and make sure to check that out as well I hope you guys have a great day I hope that you learned a little something from this video um, I love you very much and I will see See you next time. Bye-bye.